Hello, it's Fubaba, and today I'm going to tell you a story about no jumping on the bed. In his room near the top of a tall apartment building, Fubaba was getting ready for bed. His father said, If I told you once, I told you a million times, no jumping on the bed. One day, it's going to crash right through the floor. Now lay down and go to sleep. Foo Baba plopped down his head, squeezed his eyes, and heard Good night, said his father. He turned off the light and pulled the door almost shut. The room was dark and quiet, except for a soft thump, 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 coming from the room above. That's Eli upstairs, thought Fubaba. He switched on the lamp. If Eli can jump on his bed, so can I. Fubaba jumped higher and higher until his hair brushed the ceiling. When he landed, the mattress creaked, the floor cracked, and his whole bed Tipped up sideways. <laughs> then down through the floor went Fubaba and all. Fubaba bedroom was directly above Dixie's dining room. She was quite surprised when Fubaba landed in her spaghetti and meatballs. I was not expecting company for dinner, she mumbled with a mouthful of meatballs. I was not expecting company. Mmm, said Fubaba. Spaghetti is my favorite. Bleeding, I have a chance to eat. His bed smashed at the table and kept on falling and falling and crashing down through the floor. Down and down fell Fubaba. Dixie, the spaghetti, the bed, and all. Mr. Fowler didn't even notice a bed coming through his ceiling until a meatball bounced off his head. Dixie landed in his lap and Fubaba splashed into his aquarium. I already had a bath tonight, said Fubaba. He wanted to watch the monsters on TV. But his bed crunched through the floor and took with it. Down and down fell Fubaba. Dixie, Mr. Fowler, the TV, the spaghetti, the bed, and all. Fubaba's Aunt Jessica had just moved in. She was still unpacking when Dixie, Mr. Fowler, and a dripping wet Fubaba tumbled through the ceiling right into a box with her stamp collection.
Foo Ba Ba burst through the bottom of the box and down through the floor. Aunt Jessica soon followed. Down and down fell Foo Ba Ba, Dixie, Mr. Fowler, Aunt Jessica, the stamps, the TV, the spaghetti, the bed, and all. Luke and Caleb had worked for days building a house of blocks. House of blocks. They were afraid that Nicole might knock it over. They shooed her out. Then the upstairs neighbors came through the ceiling. Excuse us, said Fubaba. We won't be staying long. Then his bed crashed through the floor. Down and down fell Fubaba, Dixie, Mr. Fowler, Aunt Jessica, Luke, Caleb, Nicole, the blocks, the stamps, the TV, the spaghetti. The last thing Mr. Carnahan expected was a bed coming through his studio ceiling, followed by nearly everyone in the building. If I knew you wanted to see my paintings, he said, I would have tidied up a bit. Then his floor caved in and everyone followed. Fubaba's bed down through the hole, down and down, fell Fubaba, Dixie, Mr. Fowler, Aunt Jessica, Luke, Caleb, Nicole, Mr. Carnahan, cans of paint, the blocks, the stamps, the TV, the spaghetti, the bed, and all. Maestro Stafford and his string quartet were astonished by the colorful crowd that dropped in unannounced. I love an audience, he said. But when paint splattered everywhere, the maestro wished the audience would leave. And they did, taking his string quartet with them. Leave. The maestro's floor was also the basement ceiling. It was dark as midnight down there. Fubaba squeezed his eyes as he fell through the darkness until he landed on something soft. He opened his eyes. Everything was in its place. And outside the door, his mother and father were talking quietly. Woo! No more jumping on the bed for me, said Fubaba as he lay back down to sleep. Suddenly, he heard a creak. The ceiling cracked, and down came Eli, bed and all. Down and down fell Eli. Hey, no more jumping on the bed. Whee!
Fubaba say goodbye.